What is going on guys, Cameron Siever here with the video. So as you can probably tell by the title, here's my uh, tackle bag that contains most of my uh, everyday bass fishing gear that I have. Uh, I also have a couple other stuff and tackle boxes downstairs in the garage, so I'll show you that too. But this is the main one that we're gonna start off with. Uh, the bag is actually Bass Pro Shops Extreme 370 qualifier, I guess. I don't know if that's the name of the bag. I, w I was given, somebody gave this to me, so I don't really know what kind it is. It's a really cool badge, actually. But I did want to go fishing today, but here I'll show you from the outside. Here's what it looks like outside, guys. I hope you can see that through the window. Oh, there's a squirrel on the fence. I wonder if you can see that too. That's pretty cool. So there's the boat right there, getting it charged up. I went out yesterday, didn't get anything though. Didn't catch anything, didn't get any bites. So I wanted to make a video, but didn't catch anything, so couldn't. Oh jeez, it was just tripping a bucket. So um, yeah, it's been raining the whole day. It's like 40 degrees, it's disgusting out right now. It's so gross, so I don't think I'd catch anything. But I want to still give you a video, so continuing on with this. All right, so right here, it's, it's actually a really nice bag. I haven't been using it for a lot. I usually use that other red bag I have, but um, use this a couple times. Seems to be holding up pretty good. Yeah, it's a pretty cool badge. I actually never saw that, I don't think. I should probably put my name card right there. Okay, so it's got this nice strap that you hold it with. It's kind of annoying carrying it whenever you're like pond fishing, but this holds way more than my other bag did, so I'll see if I can open this. Okay, I might have to. I don't know if I can open this with one hand. Let's see. There we go. Okay, I got it open. Alright, so I'm just going to take all the boxes out. I have four boxes. Stuff might be slightly unorganized for my last fishing trip. Okay, so here are all my four boxes I got right here. Um... And by the way, this bag is for like bass fishing pretty much. Only I have like some like uh, cat fishing um, gear and for like some small hooks for bluegills and crappies and a couple like lures for like smaller fish like white bass downstairs in the garage. So I'll show you that later. But um, right here is here's the first box I'm gonna open up. Okay, first let me move this lipless crankbait to the other box. I just recently organized all this stuff. Normally, it's it was way worse than this before. All right, so here in this first box, I hope you can see everything, guys. Um, it's mostly just like terminal tackle kind of stuff. So right here, I got uh, I think these are all four aught extra wide gap gamagatsu like just Texas rig hooks, really for worms and crawls and stuff. Really sharp hooks. Kamigatsu makes good ones for that. Uh, in this section right here, we got some bigger flipping hooks like this one. Uh, some belly weighted swim bait hooks for pretty big swim baits. Um, yeah, just a couple like belly weighted hooks, I guess, right here. Here's another one. Here I have maybe one of the most important tools in my whole box, the line clippers. I don't know if you guys are like this, but... I've never been able to be one of those people who can just like bite through any kind of line. I used to do that all the time, but I just can't anymore. I used to be able to bite through like 40 pound braid. It was kind of scary. But my friend can do that really well. Uh, he can bite through anything, but I can't. I need these, so I use these all the time just cutting lines and stuff. Here's some uh, smaller Texas rig hooks. I don't know if I don't really use these much. I pretty much mostly use the 4 aught. They work for pretty much anything. That's why I like them best, but here, this I found is just like a, I guess you could use this for a wacky rig or something like that. Kind of those octopus style hook things. These are the lighter Texas rig hook. Like these are, some of these are actually really small. Wow. Didn't realize how small these were. Look at that. Like a three inch Sanko maybe. Tiny little one. Some of these red ones. They ain't got those in mystery tackle box. Yeah, these are really light wire. So like, if you know there's like just smaller fish, I guess you could use this. Because I think those would bend out pretty easy. Here I got three spoons. Oh, uh, this is not supposed to be in there. Um, yeah, here's this. Oh, jeez. Now it's lost. Here's just like a... I think these are called octopus hooks. Octopus hooks, I believe. Um, use these for like Nico rigging or like wacky worm, I guess. 
Okay, next up here are these some spoons. We've got a, I think this is a half ounce Castmaster spoon. Castmaster makes like some of the best spoons. I've used this a little bit. It's pretty good. I caught some nice bass on it. I'm hopefully gonna use these at the lakes during winter once they school up. Here's a jigging spoon I got right there. I haven't used those too much. And another gold spoon. Some small uh, three-inch storm bluegill swim baits. These work okay. They kind of swim sideways. Don't have the best action, but they work all right. I've caught some fish on them. Uh, here's just some random swivels. Here are like some jig heads for swim baits. Uh, some like like small quarter ounce egg weight kind of things. Guess you use that for Carolina rig. Rigging. Um, here's just this one drop shot weight I found. Hopefully I'm going to add to that soon. There's a random Senko. I actually have no idea why that's in there. Um, I have these two underspins. Didn't really have anywhere to put them. So I just put these two underspins in here. I really like using underspins. Uh, they work really well in lakes. And I put a nice, uh, I think that's four inch, I don't remember. Maybe three and a half inch swim bait on there. And then here are all the... Uh, this Texas rig weights I got. Bullet weights, I mean. So I use that for Texas rigging. Okay, next. I feel like that took a long time. Um, next is this box right here. This is kind of basically anything with a skirt. It's basically what I grouped in here. Got some two spinner baits. This is my favorite one. Works really well with that swim bait trailer on. These, these are actually really cheap. You can go to Academy, you can buy this exact one for $2. It's actually a really good deal. They might seem pretty cheap, but they actually work very well. I think they work just as well as the expensive spinner baits. This one's a $1 spinner bait from Walmart. I don't think it's quite as good as the Academy, but yeah, I'd say buy the $2 Academy ones because these work really well. Great spinner baits. I use that a lot. Here's this uh, pretty unique jig that I've at least tried to use a couple times. I really haven't caught tons of fish on it but I have caught some it's got a nice uh, crawl trailer on the back right there really like the colors of it puts off a good scent in that crawfish it's got a flat head right there really unique design actually I've caught some fish on that same with this I don't really don't use jigs as much as I should should try and use them a little more here's this uh I believe that is a flipping jig Maybe pitching jig, I'm not quite sure. But, yeah, I not really know t too much about jigs because I don't use them that often, but just a black and blue color with a little uh, crawfish trailer. Also, if you're having problems with your trailer sticking on, what I did with this one, this doesn't really fit well. I just got super glue, glued it on, stays on perfectly. Oh, and here's a little rattle. If, like, I'm in muddy water, I'll, you can add this to some jigs, It'll give it a little more sound, that helps it. Um... Here's this football head jig. I think there's a one ounce. Another same crawl trailer on the back. This will be good in winter, I think. Oh, I'll try, I have to try that. And then I have two of these. It's just the same thing. Three quarter ounce uh, football head jigs for a bit shallower water. And then here's one of my favorite lures. Um, I think this half ounce Z-Man chatterbait with a little white swim bait on the back. White color seems to work re really well. That does really good in ponds, especially. Uh, and here's uh, another chatterbait with a little craw on the back, black and blue style. Okay, so done with that box, and here is here's a pretty old one. This is about all my jerk baits, crank baits, most of my swim baits, kind of in it. Um, all right, starting in the back with the jerk baits. All right, I haven't used this bait really that much. I should probably. It's kind of a pretty big jerk bait right here. It says, oh, I'm stabbing myself. It's got a nice uh, shad minnow pattern on it. It says it's the Cutter 110. I don't really know what that means. I guess that's just the model. I don't really know who made that, but okay, I have this crank, ugh, jerk bait, geez. It actually dives pretty far down deep. I think it should do good this winter in the lake, so I'll have to give it a try. Pretty small though. Might have to use that in spinning gear. Then I have two of these. I don't know how I got two mystery tackle boxes, the same one. I don't have no idea. But uh, yeah, this came in mystery tackle box quite a while ago, suspending jerk bait. 
caught some fish on it, but jerk baits also aren't my favorite as well. And then I have, I found, a, actually I think I found all of these crankbaits. Try and get them untangled for you guys. Might have to, gosh, that's one bad thing about crankbaits, they'll get stuck everywhere. Okay, maybe I'll just show them to you like this. Okay, so this uh, chartreuse one I just found at the lake. I thought I, I might, I'm going to have to get some new split rings and everything on it, new hooks, but it's still in decent shape. It's a deep diver. Maybe I'll use that. Uh, another shad pattern. It's pretty hollow or um, clear paint job on it. You can kind of see through it. Kind of a deep diver too. And then another pretty deep diving crankbait. It's seen better days, but I don't know. I don't use those a ton. I mostly use square bills most of the time. Oh, geez, it's getting stuck everywhere. Okay, next. Got this extremely shallow diving uh, fat crankbait. It only goes like three feet. So really good for, I guess, uh, shallow rivers. I'll use that in shallow rivers. Does pretty well. And then here's this crappie uh, crankbait. Uh, I think it's Life Target, yeah. I haven't really used that too much. And then I got... These two, I believe, are Bass Pro Shop brand. Just shad pattern crankbaits. Uh, I like this one a lot. Works pretty well, especially in rivers. Then here's a Storm swim bait. Uh, these can do decent sometimes. Not my favorite though. And then I got two kind of bigger size swim baits. I haven't been able to try them much. I kind of just got these. Uh, Here's this. This was a pretty expensive lure. It's like twenty dollars. Kind of regret buying it, but it's the Shine Glider One Three Five, made by Savage Gear. It's like a five inch, I'd say, shad swim bait. I'll probably throw this more in springtime or so when the fish really want to fatten up. That'll probably work really well. Get get you a big bite. And then here's this huge bluegill. It's a pretty big bluegill um, swim bait. I'll have to use this in a pond sometime, probably. Because I think it worked better in a pond than it would at the lakes. Because most of the lakes are on me. It's all about the shad, really. Maybe I'll throw this around. But, um, yeah, here's this bluegill swim bait. Pretty heavy, actually. Maybe I'll get a big bass on this soon. And then this. Oh, come on. I got it. I got it, guys. All right, so here we have this. I think this is another live target lure. Um, just kind of like a... A, a sinking swim bait you can just twitch it or swim it along with a couple twitches I've caught some nice bass on this one works pretty well this is like a crankbait but with like a split in it. it's really weird strange lure I haven't used it too much maybe I should give it another try now these I'll just group these into one these work really well I bought this I think this was like ten dollars off Amazon I kinda think I got ripped off but it works really well. Um, same with this. I think I bought this for five. These both work extremely well in ponds. They work really well and like not many lures are quite like that. Just small jointed swim baits work really well. Okay, moving on. It's gonna be one long video actually. Uh, a lot longer than I thought. Here's this uh, white buzz bait I got. It's got man, it's looking really dirty actually. I haven't used this for a long time, but catches me some nice fish here's the the duck i plan on using this in spring because i will get a bass on this like no matter how long it takes i will get a bass on that i really want to use that random piece of line i don't know what's in there now maybe one of the best lures in my box right here the whopper popper i've caught so many fish on this already i haven't even been using this that long um i first got addicted to them because i found one at the lake i got so lucky because these are expensive lures but they are worth it these work so well. This was like $18. It's ridiculous. But I found one at the lake, but I lost that because I broke off on a big bass or something. I forgot. But those work really well. I'd recommend picking one of those up. Obviously not for winter time which, that it is right now, which kind of stinks. But I'd say around March time, I'll, around March, I'll probably be able to throw this around. Here's another black buzz bait. This is a war eagle buzz bait. These work really well because they got the nice big blade. Then I got some spooks in here. I should have a popper, but that's tied on one of my rods, so normally I have a popper right here. Let me get the spooks untangled. These are really noisy, but that's 
kind of what you want. Okay, here's this this big um, head and jeez, big head and spook. And funny story about this, I bought this for a trip I went to. Actually, like basically exactly a year ago. Can't even hold it. It was in Costa Rica. I was fishing off the beach, so I was fishing off these rocks. And I was working this spook along, like through the water. All of a sudden, I see this huge figure, this big black fish, come up right behind it because the water's really clear. But it just followed it, and I was twitching, I was twitching, I was freaking out, of course. But he really, he just never bit it, which really made me kind of sad. That still haunts me to this day because I don't. I think it was a barracuda, if I had to guess. It's probably like 20 pounds. But I would have absolutely gone wild if that thing actually ate. It freaked me out. Maybe it's because I was just using straight braid. It's probably my mistake, which kind of stinks. But whatever, I guess you will I'll learn maybe next time if I get another chance. Here's another uh, just bone-colored spook. And actually, funny thing about like half my lures, guys, I actually found half of these. Like, I, I, like half of these, I don't know what they are because I found them at ponds and stuff. Just always keep your eye out for lures because you can find some nice lures like this one. It was just sitting on the bank of a pond. Works really well. Nice bone-colored spook. Here's a shad-colored spook. I actually also found this. This is awesome. Deadly on schooling fish. Okay, I got this weird frog. Found this. I don't know what that is. I wouldn't use that much. I don't know why I have that. This mouse lure. I've caught some nice bass on it. It's kind of a little too small. Because I lose a lot of fish on this. But I've caught some nice bass on it. Pretty fun to use. Here's this nice frog, really beat up. I need to get some more frogs for springtime. Okay, now this this mess, that's gonna be fun to untangle. The lipless crankbaits. Okay, here's a three four ounce lipless crankbait. Got in a mystery tackle box. Can't hold the baits today. Just shad pattern, works really well. Caught a lot of stripers on this actually at Lake Texoma recently. Pretty recently at least. Then uh, here's a... Uh, a chrome colored uh, rattle trap really beat up and cool story about this lure is maybe two three years ago basically I, it actually might be like exactly all right so on this first uh, big pocket I got opening this up I'm just gonna dump everything out uh, kind of one at once. Come on. Closing up on me again. What is this? Oh. Okay, so what I got in here, uh, these two like little patches, you can open them up, they're Velcro, put on your lures so they don't get snagged on anything. Can't even tell you how many times I've had to ruin like a pair of shorts because I got a crankbait in them while walking to ponds especially, so always have those in my bag. Always got to have a scale because like ever since I caught that PB I got, of course I didn't have a scale then. You never have a scale until you catch your biggest bass. But now I always have that uh, measuring tape with me as well. Flashlight. Uh, this is just, you put this on the scale, open that up, put that on the fish's jaw. Right there so it holds them. And then just some cutters, I don't even know what that is. Okay, oh geez. I'm gonna try and go fast through all the soft, the rest of the stuff in here is just soft plastic baits that I got. I'm gonna try and go kind of fast because I feel like I'm taking forever. Alright, this is all swim baits I got. Just got some rage swimmers, really good. Oh geez, I crushed that tail. Gotta fix that. Yeah, some rage swimmers. Here is just a pearl white color. Okay, I'll deal with that later. That's uh, just like a little darker color. I don't know what that is. Here are some of these Speed Shad Tournament Series by Bass Pro Shops. Those are good. Some Arkansas Shiner Color Zoom Flukes. Awesome bait. These, I think, are honestly garbage. The Z-Man. Um, Diesel Minnows. Tail screwed up right here. They're too stretchy. Impossible to put on the hook. Like, they do not stand the hook well. I'm sure they last a long time, but I don't think they... But, like... They all melted on me. I had those. Those are garbage. Do, do not buy those. Um, then Big Bite Baits. Only have one of these left. This is a trailer I had on my chatter bait. Just a little swim bait. Uh, more flukes. Smoking shad color. Flukes are awesome baits. Here are like some big swim baits. I put on the, um, those big swim bait hooks that I have. Work really well on heavy cover. Like lily pads and weeds and kind of stuff like that. 
Okay, moving on. Get out all these. All right, let's try and go through. I don't know if you can see that too well. It's in a plastic bag. It's probably really hard to see. But there's was just like some black and blue crawfish baits. Um, all these bags are pretty dusty. Honestly, I don't really know what these are. Rage show coffee worms. I have no idea. Those are just some um, green pumpkin kind of looking curly tails. Those are decent. Some purple curly tail worms. These are really good. I use these all the time. Um, I don't know what the color is. No idea, honestly, but I use those all the time. Same with these Tequila Sunrise Color by Yum. These are getting low on those. Here I got some lizards. And I would recommend getting, like, some chartreuse dye and, and dipping the tails in those. I need to buy some of that. That's actually something I need to get. For those lizards, uh, Cabin Creek, Brush Hogs, kind of things. Uh, Gambler Flap and Tail Worms. More Brush Hogs. Even more brush hogs. Don't even use brush hogs that much. Some paddle tail frogs. Just like creature baits. I have no idea. I don't even know. Um, these are just like some black and blue crawfish, I guess. Uh, those would work decent. Have that on the back of my black and blue chatterbait. I've never used these. These look kind of stupid. Those by Catchco and Mystery Tackle Box. Just like some white clear worm thing that looks kind of dumb, honestly. Uh, same with these. Those look kind of stupid. I have used those. I caught a bass on one, but... Okay, these, I really love these. These, uh, net bake, pack of slim. You can see by there was a nine pack and I only have two. These work really well. They have a lot of scent on them. Of course, you guys can't smell it, but really good scent. Good size, good color. I like, like those a lot. Okay, so I think we just went through everything. And nope, we did not. I have one more pocket with stuff in it. Okay. Grabbing this. Alright. Last thing, 30 pack of black and blue Senkos because you can literally never have too many. And I, I, just, I finally just bought Stickos. I used to always think like, oh, the Senkos are the greatest. You can't buy anything else. But they're just too rid ridiculously expensive. Like, I can't possibly buy those again like eight dollars for like ten I can't believe that that people actually buy those and I was one of them uh, same thing tournament series stickos just green pumpkin color this so I just have one of these Nico rig baits these are pretty good and then just two uh, large Senkos huge ones okay so I'm gonna go grab some of the stuff I have for my garage still and I'll be right back up here guys I just grabbed a couple more items so let's get into them. So this, actually funny story about this, it was during my last tournament on Lake Texoma. I was just fishing around, I think I was using a crankbait or something, I don't remember. Get that unhooked. Jeez. That stab it, okay, never mind. I think I was using a crankbait or something. Um, yeah, I was just fishing along these rocks. All of a sudden I snagged this, so it was like, I was like really angry, because like it's always annoying whenever you snag somebody else's line. Then as I, was, as I was pulling it up, like I thought, oh, then maybe there's a lure connected to this or something. Or I was, I was just like pulling it up, and I saw this on here, brand new, Alabama rig, five hooks. Actually, these I think these are exact same swim bait hooks I have, same swim baits I have. I, this is exactly how I found it. It looked just like this, except for I changed out the middle one to a darker swim bait because with Alabama rigs you always want to have the middle one a little different. So I just changed it out. It was a white one. But like brand new, like they literally must have just lost it like a couple hours before I did. I was there. So that was an awesome steal. This probably would have cost me like $25. I've always wanted to have one of these, but like never wanted to buy one because it's just crazy expensive. Okay, next crazy item that I have. I don't even know if you can see that, guys. Hope you can see that well. Those are size 30 hooks. Like this is my, okay, this is my uh, pointer finger or whatever size 30 hooks yes they do go that small these are literally the smallest hooks i could possibly find i have caught like half inch minnows on these i tried using these because i just want to see like try micro fishing it is actually crazy hard because i don't really have the right stuff for it you like on a the max you can use with these four pound tests 
It's crazy, but you can catch like minnows if you want to catch minnows for bait. You can use those. Okay, let me open up this thing real quick. Right here. This was a crazy, crazy find I had at the lake. I just found these on some rocks. It was a full assortment of all these crappie tubes. And it was even more full than this. I used some. Especially this color. I really like that color. It had jig heads in it. All these different colors. I've used these. Caught so many bluegill and like panfish and and some small bass in those. It's crazy awesome find that I got that. Okay, next up are a couple random lures. Here's this popper that I made. And I actually, funny story about this, not really that funny. But, um, my GoPro, like, my old GoPro used to have so much issues that, like, it would, like, skip over random parts of, like, um, video that I was filming. So, I used this lure at a pond. And I actually legit had a bass come up, grab this. I set the hook. I had him on, and I and I brought him in. So I landed the fish. I actually caught one on this. Believe it or not, like I, I'm not kidding. But then, of course, in the part of the video, it totally skipped it over. So I was trying to make a video for you guys with this thing, but uh, never got it on. So if you want to see me do a part two of this with this uh, homemade lure, leave a comment below and let me know, cause. It'll be fun to try, of course, in springtime because they won't eat top water now. It just kind of stinks. Okay, here's this little shrimp lure that I've used in Florida. Um, I caught a couple small redfish on it and um, a black drum on it, actually. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool lure. Um, maybe I'll do a challenge, try to catch a bass on that. Here's just some striper swim bait I found at a dam once. I've never even touched it. I don't even know why I brought that up here. Um... Opening this box, okay. Here's all my miscellaneous hooks and catfish stuff. Okay, well these hooks right here, these kinds, these, I think I think these are mosquito hooks. These are really good for using live bluegills for bass. Maybe a bigger size than this, but that's what I use. And I always crush the barbs when I'm using live bait for bass because they will engulf it, and you can get the hook out easy that way if you if there's no barb. Uh, here's just this random circle hook. I found all these, another huge circle hook, catfish hooks. Here's just more smaller catfish hooks, even more catfish hooks. These are like for like crappie, like live minnows. This is what I use. Catch, catch some crappie on these. These are like for carp maybe. Oh jeez. Carp and bluegills, that kind of stuff. Okay, opening it up. Got a couple of random bobbers for live bait. One of these is like a yo-yo trap. It's really neat. Uh, kind of hard to explain how it works, but like you set it up with the bait, uh, the fish, if the f you can like set it up and then like, uh, here let me try to do this for you guys with my feet of course. So you pull out the amount of line you want and then you can like stop it with that thing. You see right there and then a fish takes it, it'll, it'll pull back on that fish like that. You'll get them, and then you can check the trap. I've actually really never used this. I probably should. Here's a little bell for, like, nighttime catfishing or something. Um, wire leader for gar. Uh, some more bobbers. Infinite amount of split shots. A couple egg weights I found. Pyramid sinkers for the beach. Some more bank sinkers. And here's some swivels. And I think that'll be it, guys. So, thank you for bearing with me for this long, long video. Um, sorry I couldn't make a fishing video today, guys. I'll try to make one maybe tomorrow or the next day. It's really bad weather right now, but hope you enjoyed uh, this video and seeing all the tackle I have. Hopefully, I'll expand that a lot, especially during Christmas. And thanks for watching, and see you next time.